Hi everyone and welcome to day four of these devotions called Rhythms of Grace. The first three rhythms that we've looked at this week have all been quite personal. By God's grace, we can be like Jesus, live spirit-led lives, and set aside time for prayer, worship, and spiritual reading. And now the final two days of these devotions are looking at more outward expressions of our faith. So today we come to the fourth rhythm, which is all about how, by God's grace, we can serve others and the world. I wonder who might come to mind if I asked you to think of someone who made a positive impact in the world. Someone in recent history, say the past 100 years or so. And I want you to think of that person and ask yourself what their motivation was. If you've got time, you might want to pause the devotional video at the stage to give you some time to think about it. When I think of this question, a few names instantly come to mind. Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, Marie Curie. These were people who served others and they sought justice in the world. They wanted to put right the things that didn't seem right to them. But what was their motivation? Well, it was their beliefs. It was what they believed about the world, about others and about God. But there's another key factor, which is compassion. They had compassion for others, so much so that they were willing to make sacrifices in order to make the world a better place for other people. And actually, this idea is at the centre of the Christian faith. Now, of course, for followers of Jesus, the greatest example that we have is Jesus himself. While he was living on this earth, he demonstrated how we are meant to treat others and how we can serve the world around us. When we read about the account of Jesus' life, it's pretty clear that he cared a lot about other people, especially the poor, the marginalised and the outcasts of society. Jesus was moved by deep compassion for the injustices in the world around him. And this is why, during his earthly life, he spent time with people who were regarded as unimportant and unworthy. He tended to the sick and dying. He spent time with the rejected and the oppressed. And in doing this, he was demonstrating God's love and compassion for all humanity. In many ways, this shouldn't be a surprise to us because right at the beginning of Jesus's ministry, he kind of states his intentions and lays out a bit of a manifesto. He does this using words from Jewish scripture taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived around 700 years before Jesus. And we have the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament part of the Bible. Jesus makes a public declaration in the synagogue by reading the following words from Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. You can read about this in Luke's account found in the New Testament part of the Bible in the book of Luke chapter four. And I love those words. They're so powerful, aren't they? They're also full of hope. And I think they really sum up well Jesus's mission on earth. And although actually they're talking about physical things, they're actually pointing to spiritual things, to spiritual freedom and healing that comes with God's kingdom. Jesus's ministry also brought a foretaste of this kingdom where one day all things will be made new and put right. And actually the good news is Jesus himself because he is the way to everlasting life with God. He is the freedom. He is the freedom from the spiritual darkness of the world. So for followers of Jesus, people who want to be more like him, we looked at this on day one of these devotions, it is clear that actually this manifesto is also for us. We can continue this good work that Jesus started during his earthly life. We can bring good news to the poor. We can bring healing to the brokenhearted. We can seek justice and freedom for the oppressed. And we can bring the hope of new life for those living in spiritual darkness. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world, building God's kingdom on compassion and love. And although the problems of the world can seem overwhelming, can't they? We don't know where to start. It's by the grace of God that we are able to serve others and the world. We don't need to do it in our own strength. There's a great quote by Mother Teresa, which I find really encouraging. She said this, Never worry about numbers. Help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest to you. 
And actually it was by this outlook that Mother Teresa went on to help hundreds of thousands of people throughout her lifetime. So what about you? How can you bring God's love and compassion to the world around you? Who is that person or who are those people that you can serve? Maybe just spend some time today thinking about this. Ask God to show you where the need is and how you can respond. It might be doing something really simple that will have an enormous impact. Let's pray together. Loving God, I just thank you so much that you're a God of love, of compassion, a God of justice. Father, we thank you that you love us so much that you, you sent your son into this earth to live a life that would proclaim the good news to the poor, that would bring healing, that would bring the first fruits of your kingdom where all things are made new. Lord, as we look into the world around us, it can seem overwhelming, there is so much need, but help us today just to see a need that we can respond to. And by your grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, will you equip us and guide us, we pray. Amen. Today's worship song is called God of Justice by Tim Hughes. And it really captures those words we've been looking at. And it also reminds us of our calling to go out into the world and serve. You'll find a link for that song in the description below. And I really hope you do have a listen. And as you do, just let the words sink into your heart and see how you respond. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope you're going to join me tomorrow for what will be the last of these devotions. Mm -hmm.